Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for April 23rd, 2024. I'm teaching a series right now on how to live our lives with a laser focus on the fixed purpose that we believe that God has established for us before the world began. So none of us are a mistake. God sent us to this planet at just the right time. God is completely purposeful and intentional. So God put a purpose down inside of us and we're born ignorant of that purpose. When we get born again, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to us what was prepared for us, but concealed from us. And then we live our lives in pursuit of this purpose. We discover it, develop in it, deploy into it. The goal is to find it, follow it, and finish it before we die. We've been studying the life of Joseph. And Joseph went through many phases of his life. Well, today, I'm going to teach you. Here's the title. This is good. How to endure a dry season. Put in the chat, how to endure a dry season. We all have to learn how to endure dry seasons because not every season of our life is going to be pleasant. So I want you to open up your heart now and get ready because if you're going through a dry season or you may go through one in the future, this word is going to help you get through it and to do it in a, with a level of consistency that God is looking for. So open up your heart to receive. This is going to be good. All right, so let's get into the word. But before we do, let me just make this quick announcement. So tonight I'm teaching Bible study at VCMI Woodbridge. And if you're not in the area, you can go to vcmi.org and go to the Woodbridge campus page and then watch the live stream there. Uh, Bible studies at 7 p.m. And I'm preaching on Sunday as well. And so the word that God, that God gave me, I'm excited about it. And so you want to, if you're in the area, meet me tonight at Bible study. Uh, I would love to see you there, 7 p.m., VCMI Woodbridge, and then on Sunday morning. I definitely want to see you on Sunday morning, and uh, we believe it's going to be good. All right, so that out of the way. The foundation of Scripture uh, for this year that we're standing on is Proverbs 4 and 25. This is what it says. Set your gaze on the path before you. Say this, I set my gaze. With fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, I ignore life's distractions. I'm going to look straight ahead. I'm going to ignore every distraction. So we're also looking at James chapter one, verses two through four from the Passion Translation. This is very powerful as well. This is what it says. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, you should see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up inside of you the power to endure all things. And then as this endurance or grace grows inside of you, stronger and stronger, it releases perfection or maturity into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Say that. Say there's nothing missing and nothing lacking. Say I am mature in Christ Jesus. Genesis chapter 39, beginning at verse 21 from the Message Bible, the Bible says, but there in jail, God was still with Joseph and he reached out in kindness to him and put him in good terms with the head jailer. That's the favor of God. Say the favor of God is on me. The head jailer put Joseph in charge of all of the prisoners. Joseph wound up managing the whole operation. The head jailer gave Joseph free reign, never checked in on him. Why? Because God was with him. And whatever he did, God made sure that it worked out for the best. Put in the chat, whatever I do, God is making sure that it works out for the best. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, King James Version says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. The easy to read version says there's a right time for everything and everything on earth will happen at just the right time. So everything in your life is going to happen and it's going to happen at just the right time. So what does this mean for you 
today. I have three things, no, two things. I have two things to share with you in this morning. And this word, I believe is going to help a lot of people. Y'all ready? Two things. Here's number one. Here we go. We all go through dry seasons. I would love to say that we didn't, but the truth is that we do. So we all go through dry seasons. While we all have a divine assignment from God, an assignment that was established before the world began. I already told you that we must discover it, develop it, and deploy into it, find it, follow it, and finish it, right? Before we die. But as we're going through this, we live our lives out, I've told you this many times, in times and seasons, levels, and stages, right? So there's a time for this and a time for that. There's a time for this and a time for that. Those are times. Within those times, there are seasons that we matriculate through. And within those times and seasons, we have to go through levels and stages. So there's times and seasons, levels and stages. To be clear, not every time, season, level, or stage is going to be pleasant, right? So, so I would love to tell you, I believe that it's God's will for me to prosper. I believe that it's God's will for you to prosper. I believe that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That's the Bible, right? I mean, so, so I do believe that it's the will of God for us to prosper, to, to come out on top, to win. But that doesn't mean that every season and every experience of my life is going to be pleasant. There will be some seasons that are more enjoyable than others. There will be some seasons that, at least on the outside, seem more fruitful than others. So we all have to endure seasons that seem, at least on the outside, dry. So there he was, Joseph. He was in prison. I told you a few days ago, he was beginning again, right? His father, who loved him dearly, thought he was dead. I mean, think about that for a minute. Remember, his brothers went back, took the coat of many colors, which they hated. They killed an animal. They took the coat of many colors, dipped it in the blood of the animal, took the coat back to their father and said, hey, we found the coat. We didn't find Joseph. I guess Joseph is dead. Look at all the blood on the coat. That's terrible. <laughs> that is terrible what they did to their father. So Joseph's father, who loved him, thought he was dead. His brothers, who betrayed him, really had no idea what he was doing. They just sold him as a slave to this traveling caravan, right? They didn't even know where he wound up. He wound up in Egypt. They didn't know that. The friends that Joseph developed in Potiphar's house, Potiphar being one of them, everybody thought he was a rapist, right? Because now he's in jail for basically trying to have sex with Potiphar's wife. So think about that for a minute. Like his father thinks he's dead. He's dead. His brothers don't know where he is. And Potiphar thinks he's a rapist or, you know, he's accused, obviously, of sexual assault. So Joseph, even though he's called by God, wakes up one morning and he's in prison. And he's in the middle of a dry season. Now, what I just laid out for you were facts. But here's the truth. Here's the truth. God was with him. Put in the chat, God is still with me. God was with him. God was still with him. So on the outside, looking in, it looks like, man, Joseph is terrible. Like Joseph is having a terrible life. But on the inside, God was still preparing Joseph. And actually, he was in the center of God's will. He went from favorite child to slave. And then he went from slave to prisoner. So on the outside, you would say, oh my God, that kid, his life is all jacked up. But, but on the outside, people don't see what God is doing. Remember, God is moving pieces around on the chessboard of his life. And so can you imagine, like his brothers are back home, his brothers are chilling, his brothers are having dinner with their dad, his brothers are hanging out with the family, and he's in prison. And he went from son to slave. He went from slave to to prisoner, and God was working. Come on, man. You telling me that God was working in that? Yes, God was working. It was a dry season. And, 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 and the truth is that a lot of us, we go through these seasons, and it looks like God is not working, but God is always working. Put in the chat, God is always working. It may seem like on the outside, you're going through a dry season. Maybe, maybe. Maybe on the outside, to other people, it looks like, oh, you've messed up. Like, this is not the season of your life where you're thriving. 
It may look like you're not progressing to other people. Maybe for you, even for you, you're like, well, this is not what I expected. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I prayed for. But think about Joseph. Do you think when he woke up in prison, this is what he wanted? No, but he was being processed for his purpose. Listen, sometimes we go through dry seasons. Sometimes we go through difficult circumstances. Sometimes we have to drink and swallow a bitter pill in life because it's part of God's plan and God is moving things around for us and it may not be pleasant. And on the outside, it may not even look like it's being fruitful, but keep living long enough and keep your attitude intact. You know why? Seasons change. Put in the chat, seasons change. And when the season shifts, you want to be ready. Put in the chat, oh, I will be ready. I will be ready. When the season shifts, I'm going to be ready. So here's a few things we can glean from this first point. We must learn to rest in God's sovereignty during dry seasons. We got to recognize that God is orchestrating things for us. And sometimes there's a dry season, but there will never be a dry season without a purpose. See, God is setting us up for a season where we will flourish, and he's setting us up in the dry season. If you can't handle the dry season, God says you're not ready nor are you worthy for the harvest. And so you got to learn how to handle the dry seasons so that God can trust you with the abundant season. God is looking for consistency in character. Say this, put this in the chat. My character is being developed. God is looking for you to develop patient endurance in dry seasons. And well, how do I do that? Well, I lean on my faith. I choose to live by faith and not by sight. Joseph maintained his integrity through the dry season. Joseph maintained his integrity and his faith when, when he was being tested. His character was being refined for the things that were waiting for him on the other side of the season. So there are things that are waiting for you on the other side of the season, and right now your character is being developed and refined. And let me tell you something, perseverance pays off. You can put that in the chat if you want. You got to keep pressing forward. You got to make progress. Watch this. You're making progress on the inside, even when it looks like the progress is invisible to people who are looking from the outside. Joseph's journey reminds us that oftentimes our greatest achievements come after our greatest challenges. Our greatest highs oftentimes come after some <laughs> greatest lows, right? So we have to choose to live by faith and not by sight. We cannot be moved by what we see with our natural eyes. We can only be moved by what God said. The dryness of the present season cannot stifle the fruitfulness of our future. So what I'm going through right now is doesn't mean that I'm not going to have what God said. What I'm going through right now doesn't mean that I'm not going to experience God's best. It doesn't mean that, that, that what God gave me the dream for is not going to come to pass. It just means that what I need to do right now is be processed and go through whatever I need to go through. I want to pass this test so I don't have to take it again. And so what I want to do is I want to focus on the promises over the problems, knowing that God is preparing me while he's hiding me. Remember when I told you about that? God is hiding you and preparing you. So while you're hidden, God is preparing you. Just like a seed that's hidden in the ground has to germinate in this dark soil before it breaks through the surface, you are germinating in a dry season, in a dark season. You are germinating. You are growing. You are being prepared. And when, the, when finally, listen, when God releases you and says, okay, son, okay, daughter, you, you've developed in the dry season. Now I want to release you. And when God releases you, your, your development, the growth that you've experienced will be evident to all because when the, when the season shifts, you will be ready to walk into that season because you made the most of your now. I've told you like a gazillion times, make the most of your now so you can be ready for your next. I'm taking my time this morning. I don't want to get too excited. I really want to teach this because this is really important what I'm teaching. You got to make the most of a dry season. Say amen to that. Say, 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 I make the most of my now. All right, number two. I only have two points for this morning. God is still working in a seemingly dry season. If you look at, I, I love this picture God gave me. Think about an old, large, tall, strong 
tree, right? I remember when I got stationed in Washington State in the Pacific North Northwest, oh my God, you go out, in, out into the forest and you see some massive trees. If you see a tree, a, a large, tall, thriving tree, it's a living organism. And in most cases, these trees have been around for hundreds of years. Now, let's think about this tree for a minute. Within those hundreds of years, this tree has had to endure many seasons. Now, there were seasons in the tree's life when it was barren, when it looked dried up, where on the outside it looked lifeless, but it was still alive. And it was actually preparing for the next season. When you look at a tree in the middle of winter, you notice that the leaves are gone. The fruit is non-existent. The branches are naked. The tree seems lifeless, but that's on the outside looking in. On the inside, the tree is still working. On the inside, things are still alive. On the inside, it's actually preparing for the next season. Watch this. On the inside, it has not been negatively impacted. It's just that the external conditions changed. And since the external conditions are not right, then people can't see what's happening. But on the inside, it's preparing for the next season. So that when the external conditions change, then boom, the leaves can come back. Boom, the fruit can come back. See, a large tree in the middle of a winter, in the middle of a dry season, pulls up water, pulls up minerals out of the ground, and it creates sap. And it's storing up the sap in the winter so that it's ready to produce leaves and fruit when the external conditions change. See, sometimes you and I, watch this, watch this, we have to endure sap storing seasons. Put in the chat, sometimes we have to endure sap storing seasons. From the outside, looking in, it doesn't look like much is happening in our life. They don't even know what's going on, but they don't see me in my prayer closet. They don't know. They don't know what's going on, but they don't see me when I'm in this office right here on my knees and on my face. They don't know what's going on. So so yeah, on the outside, looking in, it may look like a dry season. They don't see fruit. They don't see leaves. They see, they see stuff dried up. They talk about you. Look at her. She used to be this. Look at him. He used to be that, but God is still working. See, God is still working, and he's helping us to store up all the sap that we need, watch this, so that we're ready to thrive when the season changes. When we're, yeah, so we're ready. When the out external conditions shift and change, so we'd be ready to produce what we need to produce. While Joseph was in the prison, he was still called by God. He was called by God to be the prime minister of Egypt. But during this prison phase of his life, watch this, he was in a prison reserved for offenses against the king. He was actually closer to his dream than he ever had been. But from the outside looking in, he was in a dry season. On the outside looking in, it looks like his life was all jacked up. From the outside looking in, it looks like he had ruined his life. From the outside looking in, it looks like nothing is going on in his life. But he was closer to the throne. He was closer to Pharaoh than he had ever been. See, right now, there are people that are watching me that are enduring a dry season. External conditions have changed. But that does not mean that you your internal attitude is supposed to change. God has given you an internal regulator and that regulator is the Holy Spirit. Come on, put in the chat, say, I have an internal regulator and that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of me. The Holy Spirit brings up the word of God and between the word of God and the Holy Spirit, it means that I have the power to remain patiently, uh, uh, to develop patience and to develop endurance, to develop the force of consistency, that I am going to be consistent on the inside, no matter what's happening on the outside. See, since you are dedicated to remaining the same on the inside, no matter what's happening on the outside, then when the season shifts, on the outside, you will be ready to produce. Why? Because you stored up your sap. Because you, you've made the most of your sap storing season. So when the spring comes, you'll be able to produce the leaves and to produce the harvest that God wants to produce in, with, and through your life. So this dry season is going to end. There's, there's no such thing as a season that lasts forever. So when the season ends and it shifts, you will be ready to go and you'll be ready to grow. Here's some things you can glean from this. So I'll close out this the, uh, the message for today. The first First thing I want to tell you is that internal growth 
is what you need to focus on, watch this, beyond an external show. Paul says, watch this, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, Paul said that though my outer man is perishing, my inner man is being renewed day by day. Listen, he's saying that I'm going to use uh, uh, our physical body as an example. He says we have a physical body that over time begins to perish and to dwindle, but my inner man is renewed day by day. So while you're going through seasons on the outside that don't look good, watch this, you can still be renewed on the inside. This is a season for you to be renewed and restored and revived and replenished on the inside, no matter what's going on on the outside. So when the outside changes, when the conditions are right, you will thrive, you will flourish. Why? Because you were ready. You develop spiritual resilience. You are enduring a seemingly dry season right now. And while you're doing that, you're taking the time to strengthen your inner man. Put in the chat, I strengthen my inner man. What am I doing when I strengthen my inner man? What am I doing when I'm meditating on the word? When I, what am I doing when I'm praying? What am I doing when I'm praying in the spirit? What am I doing? I'm building up my inner man. I'm building up my inner man so I'm ready to produce the fruit that God wants me to produce when the season changes. And watch this. I live my life with an anticipation of manifestation. I have a hopeful expectation of good. I know that my in, on the inside, I'm storing up sap. And so when, when spring comes, come on, listen, there's a promise. While the earth remains, Genesis 8 and 22, while the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. Here comes winter, but 100% of the time after winter comes spring. 100% of the time after winter comes spring. You might be going through a winter season, but spring is coming. Put in the chat, spring is coming. So you got to rest in the truth that God is always working, that God is preparing you, that God's handiwork is still, even when it looks invisible on the outside, when it's not visible on the outside, you know that God is still working on the inside. So look at me, be, get prepared. Say this, I am prepared from every opportunity. When the season changes, when the season shifts, I will be ready. You know why? Because prepared blessings come to prepare people. Put in the chat, prepared blessings come to prepare people. So when my spring comes, I will be ready. Why? Because I, I, I'm preparing myself now. There is a time of tremendous harvest. So greater is coming for you. Don't give up. Say this. Say harvest time is coming for me. Oh my God, I felt like preaching this morning. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this like a trumpet over your life. Say, Father, I thank you for your grace, your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy towards me. You are always with me. You will never leave me, nor forsake me, nor turn your back on me. Even when I endure a dry season, I find peace in knowing that you are still with me and you still care. And since you know how to squeeze every ounce out of every season, Father, you use the dry seasons of my life to get me ready for a season of plenty. Ooh, glory. Say this, a season of plenty is coming for me. I take advantage of my now so I can be ready for my next. I endure dry seasons with grit, perseverance, determination, and patient endurance. I declare greater is coming for me. And when the season shifts, I will be ready to walk in the fullness of the harvest. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, my God, that was good. Amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow, I'm going to have another one. <laughs> Please apply it and prosper. I love the word of God, man. I, I'm still, I'm meditating on the word I got to teach tonight. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. I want you to have an amazing day. I want you to walk into this day knowing that even if you are enduring a dry season, greater is coming for you. Make the most of your sap storing seasons. I'm, I need you to do three things. Number one, leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. Number two, share the message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Number three, listen to this video as I let you go. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If our ministry is a blessing to you, please consider becoming a partner with Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries. Not only will you support the Word of God going out on a daily basis, but you will also support our school in the Dominican Republic, where we are providing 200 Haitian children a Christ-based education free of charge and also a hot meal every day. If you want to become a partner with us, go to ripministries.org and you'll be able to do so there. 
If you don't have any of my materials, well, let me just show you a few things. Well, this is my first book, Level Up Your Life, where I cover how to level up your life in five areas of your life. Here's Grace-Based Success. It's a daily devotional where in 28 days, you'll be able to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here's two affirmations books, one for men and one for women. These books will help you to align your faith, your heart, and your lips with the word of God, or just go to rickpina.co. You'll see all the books there, apparel. Please make yourself available to those materials. They will be a blessing to you. Lastly, Isabella and I have been committed to coaching and mentorship for many, many years. And the Lord led me to use a platform where I could do it online, where we could leverage ourselves and scale. So now we have over 600 videos and continuing to grow. We're recording videos on a weekly basis where we're covering how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and how to be successful as a Christian and in business and with relationships and etc. So if you're interested in that, please go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. You will be blessed. Thank you for being a blessing to us and we pray that we will continue to be a blessing to you.